We guys appreciate you guys as always coming out on what is today? It's Thursday for me. Is it a Wednesday? Um, but I'm excited for our guys. Did a good uh, good bye week. Kept getting better at things we need to, and took the time to look at our schemes, look at our fundamentals and techniques, and look at our personnel to be like, are there guys that have played that need to play more? Are there guys that are maybe playing that need to have less of a role because of some of the things that they've done? So we looked at that over the bye week, and I, I really do think we're growing the right direction. You know, and that's the that's the goal for everybody, for us, for Coach Odom at UNLV, is who can continue to grow and improve. They played seven games, we played six. We got to keep finding ways for us to continue to grow and improve. We've had a good week, had a good uh, good practice today, and just like anything, we got to earn the right to play our best Friday night. I mean, it's a heavyweight match. Uh, we know in all three phases they've got a bunch of talent, great schemes. They're gonna play hard. That's what we're working our tail off to do as well in all three phases. So um, this game is um, the biggest one of our season because the next one. And we're fired up for the challenge, especially a conference team. And um, we know they're going to be ready for the moment. We will be too. But I'm proud of our guys. we got to continue the prep up, even with going to a hostile environment. I know that um, Bronco Nation is going to travel and trade, travel in a major way to come out to Legion. Like, I know that. You'll see a lot of blue and orange in the in the stands. And, and our guys got to earn the right to play their best. With the way the new system set up with the 12 teams, to have a game like this in October that has way more importance yeah. than it maybe would have in previous years, yeah. like just... What do, you, what do you make of that? And I guess, how does that add to it? And that's a cool element of all this. And a really yeah. October game is a big deal like this. No, yeah, BG. I mean, it definitely is. I think it definitely is for the fans, for college football supporters, for Bronco Nation. It should be. I mean, that's – and, I, you know, I'm a firm believer. You come to Boise State to earn the right to play in these games later in the year. Um, it's the biggest game because it's the next one for us. And we don't talk about college football playoff. We don't talk about Mountain West Conference Championship too much. Like, it's all about this next game because – Hawaii was the biggest game of our season two weeks ago. You know, we had to make sure we played our best there. Utah State before that, like that's just how this game goes. But being able to play in these games, have them the success they're having. I mean, they'd, they'd be undefeated outside of a late loss to Syracuse in double overtime. You know, we're five and one. Like being able to see each other middle of October, it's awesome. I think it's awesome for college football. But I know for, for me, our staff and our players, it is the ne the biggest game because it is the next one. We can look at the film and see how talented they are, how good they, they are, all those things. It's our job then to prep the way we should so we can go out and play our best because it's all the other stuff really doesn't move the needle and doesn't matter for our team and how we can play our best Friday night. Because, I mean, th these are those games that one or two plays here and there, who plays harder, how the ball gets tipped, who comes out fast, who finishes strong. I mean, that's something I respect a lot about this team that we're playing is, I mean, they've been down in games. They battled their tail off to come back and win them in the fourth quarter. Um, that's a testament to, to the culture they have there. So we know we have to be ready for the heavyweight fight. You say you, you like you said you don't get ahead of yourself, but I know you are aware of where, what the standings look oh, yeah. like. Do you guys address them at all ever? Or? Don't no, we don't look at those things. Like it just doesn't matter, right? It does. Uh, I believe like you shouldn't need to use that for motivation for your team to go play a football game. It shouldn't be, hey guys, we need to go play our best because of all these outside things. We got to go play our best because it's the next game on our schedule, and that's how you keep your team constant. Like. I'm a, I, I believe that you know discipline trumps motivation. So what I mean by that is motivation, big game. Oh my gosh, there's gonna be a lot of people there. Look at college football playoff. And then you could ride this roller coaster of how you're motivated. But, that, but then if, if there's a game you're playing that you don't have that, your team comes out flat or your team comes out not the way they should. Like It's about like our process. We gotta have championship prep this week. We're playing an elite football team, but it's the next game. And focusing on that for, for me, for our team, this is game number seven for us, and we got to earn the right to go play our best. And I'm, the, the, my message stays the same to our team. Your best will be enough, but it is required. Me, from all 100 of our player, everything we have is your best is enough, but your best is required. Maddox was pretty inconsistent in the last time there was this big national mm -hmm. stage, big game for Oregon in the second half. Mm -hmm. He's obviously gotten consistently better yep. since, but here comes another big time national no question. game. How has he gotten better to prepare himself for that kind of a stage? Yeah, he's a he's a competitor, Mike. You know, he 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 preps like a champion every single day. And and the the games he's been inconsistent, the games that he maybe hadn't played his best, he he improved from those, right? Like, you know, struggled even at some points in the Washington State game, not as consistent as we wanted him to be. Still made some good plays, enough to win these games. But wasn't, and then the next week played his best football, right? So that's what I love about Maddox, and he's continuing to learn and grow and improve, and he needs to. But no one wants it more than him, and he is that you know that quiet competitor that doesn't need to give you the raw raw speech. You know he's in there training and, and prepping to play his best game because he's gonna have to. 
He's going to have to. Everybody's going to have to to play the opponent. We have to, especially the defense we're going to see, you know, leading the nations in interceptions, number one in the nation in turnover margin. Like, those are big-time stats. Those aren't ones you just throw out. Like, there's a reason for that. This is the type of team we're playing, and he's got to make the right decisions and make the throws when he needs to. Talking to Tyler Kynath yesterday, you know, talking about his journey. Tyler who? Tyler T Kynath. Or Taylor, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yep, yep, oh, yep, yep. You know, just kind of talking about his journey and, uh, you know, from junior college mm -hmm. to, to Western Arizona or Western Illinois mm -hmm. to here, you know, just what, did, what have you seen about his desire to continue to grow? And, and then also, uh, what did, there wasn't a lot of film on him. So what do you see in him in his recruitment process? Yeah, we knew a lot of people that knew. We do a lot of research whenever we take young men from high school, but especially guys that are from junior college and or transfer portal, I'll, just to know what type of character is coming into this building. I tell recruits all the time, I mean, I protect that locker room at all costs. Like, we got to know exactly what is going. We're like the FBI in regards to working to find out about these young men. And TK is just, he comes from great stock. The coaches that he'd been around speak the world of for how hard, for how hard of a worker he is, his character. And he's done that since he's been here. I mean, he's continually gotten better every week, every month. And with some of the injuries that happened, I mean, he's been thrown in the mix in a major way. And he's done a really good job. And he's gotten better from the week's that he's been playing a lot and starting these games, and he needs to. And there's times that he um, he's really consistent. There's some other plays on film that's like, hey, TK, this is where we need you to improve, and you can. And so I'm proud of him, man. He stepped up. I mean, our offensive line, Coach Keen, obviously anchored by the Cage Casey, Ben Dooley, but even our guys that have been out, like Cage Casey, or excuse me, like Mason Randolph and Roger Carroll, like they're in there. They're in the meetings. They're helping the young guys prep. Like that's a team. Yeah, maybe I'm not going to go take the field with you on Friday night, but I am still a part of this. I'm a part of the mentality of our offensive line, and TK is a product of that. When you've got a, a group of leaders in that room, like Ben Dooley, that bring them along. Ashton announced his scholarship this week. Where did that idea come from? Did you guys talk about it? Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, where did this idea all yeah. come from? That's all Ashton. I had nothing to do with it. That's all Ashton. That's him leaving the legacy and him having an impact. That's just a small testament to who he is as a young man. It's not about Ashton. If you talk to him, it's about peop other people. It's about the team. It's about the legacy he's going to leave now and for years to come.